How can you tell if someone is an Arch Linux user? You don't have to. They're going to tell you. Now, Arch Linux is probably one of, if not the most popular, GNU Linux distros, and part of the reason for this is because of all of the Arch elitists with their smug anime girl profile pictures constantly telling us how great Arch is. So one day, you decide to ask them, how do I install? Arch Linux, and they tell you to read the fucking manual, along with a link to the Arch Wiki. Now, look, part of the point of installing Arch Linux this way is if you actually read through the wiki, understood it, and successfully built an Arch Linux system from the ground up, then you'll understand your operating system much better than the guy who just flashed Ubuntu to his laptop. And since Arch isn't much different than any other Linux distro, I mean, it's basically just bleeding edge Debian with a different package manager in my opinion, you'll have general Linux skills, which you can take with you and actually make some money off of. But if you just want an easy Arch Linux setup so that you can farm karma away from those smug anime girls, then let me introduce you to Arch Install. It's basically a command line Arch Linux installer that comes built in to all recent Arch Linux live ISOs. Now, this is the one that comes built in. You don't have to install anything additional to run this, but in my opinion, it's not as good as one of the other Arch installers. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that other one. First, I gotta do a pacman syy to sync my packages, and then a pacman s arch install. Same package name, it's going to download it for us. And then you can run it with the same exact command. And look at that, isn't that a much nicer looking Arch Linux install? Now, a lot of things are already filled out for us. It's already got the correct language for me. It's already got the correct keyboard layout. Let's go ahead and set my mirror region. So I am in the United States and the uh, list wrap around. So you can go back if you want, if you're trying to speed run it. So spacebar to select it, enter to go back. And now we'll select our hard drives and I'm going to use this little guy here. Go back, select the disk layout, and we're going to wipe all the selected drives, and we're going to install ext4, and not gonna use a separate partition. No encryption password. Bootloader, I'm going to use grub, and specify the host name. Arch Linux looks good to me. Specify a root password. There we go, specify a user account. And I'm going to make a modification to this user account by promoting them. So now they're a super user, basically means that I can run sudo and things like that. And we will confirm and exit. And now we're going to specify our profile. So this is where things are going to branch out a little bit. Like when I set up my Tor Relay, which also runs Arch, by the way, I just did the minimal so that I could have a very basic Arch install. That's just a TTY that runs a Tor Relay. Uh, but we're gonna go with desktop. And so this gives us access to a whole bunch of different desktop environments we could use. Uh, why don't we do KDE? Those usually do pretty good in the desktop threads. And we've got NVIDIA, an NVIDIA card, so we'll choose NVIDIA proprietary. Hopefully one day it'll be the NVIDIA open source drivers and they'll actually be better than the proprietary ones. And for our audio, we'll do Pulse Audio. Keep it nice and simple for our kernels. Uh, Linux default was already selected, so we'll keep that. And additional packages to install. So right here, it tells us this is where you would install things such as Firefox. So we'll choose uh, just the essential programs, you know, Firefox, Vim, HTOP, and of course we can't forget NeoFetch. That's the most important program for posting in the desktop threads. All right, so we're good. It's gonna verify that those are real packages and they are. Configure the network so that we actually have some internet to connect to Reddit and post. Uh, why don't we 
just copy the ISO network configuration. That should set everything up automatically for us. Uh, time zone, we'll use UTC. Automatic time sync, yes. And additional repositories to enable, we'll do multi-lib, because there's a lot of good stuff in that repo. And we're good to go, let's install. And this will just take a few minutes. So you can go for a walk or, I don't know, play video games, go do something else in the meantime. All right, the installation is finished. At this point, if you want to, you can chur root into that installation that we just did and make any additional changes, but I don't need to do that. So we'll hit no. And now let's reboot into Arch. Well, I gotta boot into my BIOS first and then select the right drive. If you're on a laptop or a desktop that only has one drive in it, then you could just reboot, pull out the flash drive and it should boot into Arch for you. And here we are with the KDE Login Manager. I uh, should probably change this session to X11, though. I don't think the Wayland one is gonna work on my hardware. And here we go, look at this, a nice, beautiful desktop. Uh, I should probably put this, um, Put this on the other screen so that you guys can see it. There we go, so now I have this bar at the bottom. Uh, yeah, KDE, in case you guys didn't know, it's, it's another one of those desktop environments. Well, like all the desktop environments, you can heavily configure it, but it's one of those ones that looks really nice and really modern. Uh, this kind of gives me Windows 7 vibes maybe, you know? It's almost like the Windows arrow feel to it. Uh, but oh, let's not forget the most important part of uh, installing Arch, we gotta open up our console and we gotta go ahead and get a nice little a NeoFetch going. Oh, look at that, so beautiful. Now we can post on Reddit and let everyone else know that we are using Arch, by the way, and now the cycle continues. Like and comment to hack the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.